Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about a theorem known as the Irrational Conjugates Theorem. Let's see what it states here in black. It says, let f be a polynomial function with rational coefficients, and let a and b be rational numbers such that the square root of b is irrational. If a plus root b is a zero of f, then a minus root b is also a zero of f. So, a conjugate we know is like a plus the square root of b, or a number plus the square root of a non-perfect square. And so the conjugate would be, instead of a plus the square root of b, we have a minus the square root of b, okay? And so it's irrational because we have the square root of a non-perfect square. So now, what can we do with this irrational conjugates theorem, or how can it help us? So that's where our example comes in. So as we want to write a polynomial function of least degree that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1, and the zeros 2 and 3 plus the square root of 7. So what we can do is go ahead and write f of x is equal to, and we're going to say x minus 2, and that's going to represent our 0 of a 2, because if I have x minus 2 equals 0, we add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2, okay? And now we're going to plug in our other 0, 3 plus the square root of 7. So we're going to say x minus 3 plus the square root of 7. And now the irrational conjugates theorem tells us if 3 plus root 7 is a 0, then 3 minus root 7 is also a 0 of the function. So now we can use that as well. So now we can plug in and we can say x minus 3 minus root 7 and that's also a zero of the function, okay? And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and basically we're gonna regroup in our two um, zeros that have the brackets. So instead of putting our parentheses around three plus root seven and three minus root seven, we're gonna move those parentheses to be around x minus three. So we're gonna take those parentheses and we're gonna move them to right here. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna look like. So we have f of x is equal to x minus two, and now in brackets we have x minus three in parentheses plus root seven. And our second bracket is going to be x minus three minus root seven. So now essentially uh, what we've created here is the difference of, or not, not the difference of two squares, the sum and difference pattern, okay? And so the sum and difference pattern, that's going to give us the difference of two squares, right? Once we foil it. So now what we can do is multiply. So basically we're foiling, right? So first, outer, inner, and last. But we now have conjugates that we've created here. And so now it's going to just become the difference of two squares. So now we have f of x is equal to, we still have our x minus two out here. So x minus three times x minus three is gonna give us x minus three quantity squared. And then we have the difference of two squares, so minus, and root seven times root seven would just give us a minus seven. So now what we can do, or now what we have is the a square of a binomial, x minus three quantity squared. And so now we can multiply or expand that out as a perfect square trinomial. So now we have f of x is equal to x minus two. And now in brackets, we're gonna have x squared in parentheses minus six x plus nine, and then we have this minus seven out here at the end. So x minus three quantity squared became x squared minus six x plus nine, okay? Now we can simplify a little bit. We can do nine minus seven here. So we still have x minus two. And now we can write this as x squared minus six x and plus two. All right, so now we're at the step where we can multiply. We have a binomial multiplied by a trinomial. So we just wanna multiply x by all three of our terms, and we want to multiply negative 2 by all three of our terms. So now that's going to give us f of x is equal to x times x squared would be x cubed, x times negative 6x would be negative 6x squared, x times 2 would be 2x. Negative 2 times x squared, negative 2x squared, negative 2 times negative 6x plus 12x, and negative 2 times 2 minus 4. Now we can combine like terms and we will have our final polynomial function. So f of x equals x cubed and then negative 6x squared minus 2x squared, so minus 8x squared, 2x plus 12x, so plus 14x, and then minus 4. So our polynomial function of least degree that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1, 
and has the zeros of two and three plus root seven would be f of x equals x cubed minus eight x squared plus 14 x minus four. And that's how we can use the irrational conjugates theorem to help us write a polynomial function.